For someone trying to get into Greek mythology, it can be a very daunting process. Learning who is the god of what and who gave birth to whom can be a very confusing time. If you've ever looked at a family tree of the Greek gods, then there's a good chance you were more confused than before you began. Hopefully after this video, you'll have a better understanding of the gods in Greek mythology and their origins. We can break down the gods and goddesses in Greek mythology into three generations. The primordial deities, the titans, and the Olympians. The primordial deities being the first generation were often more symbolic of the creation of the world rather than literal beings. In the very beginning, there was nothing, an empty void. First came chaos, and from chaos emerged Gaia. Gaia symbolized the earth and was considered the mother of all. Beneath the earth was the primordial deity, Tartarus. Many compare his domain to Hades or the underworld. Tartarus was where the most ferocious monsters and horrid criminals were banished, and on occasion even gods were imprisoned in Tartarus. From the chaos came Erebus, the darkness of night that would cover the earth. When Erebus lay with the night, they gave birth to the ether, the heavenly light, the early sunrise to contrast the darkness. From the night we would also see such things as fate, doom, sleep, and even death. Gaia would give birth to Uranus, the mountains, and Pontus, the primordial deity of the sea. Uranus represented the sky in all its beauty, and proved himself to be equal to Gaia, eventually becoming her mate. In some variations, it was Eros, the primordial deity of shining love, that blessed their union, but in other depictions, Eros was born later, the son of Aphrodite. Together, Gaia and Uranus produced the twelve titans, along with three giant cyclops, and three horrifying hecatonchres. Uranus despised his children, particularly the Hecatonchres because of how ugly he felt they were. He hated them so much that he pushed them back into Gaia's womb and kept them there. In enormous pain, Gaia fashioned a sickle for her children to avenge her with, but the only child brave enough to do so was Cronus, the last born of the Titans. Later that evening, when Uranus lay asleep, Cronus ambushed his father. He took his father's genitals and severed them with the sickle. The blood that began to pour from Uranus created a race of giants, nymphs and furies. Cronus then threw the severed genitals into the sea, and from those arose Aphrodite, the goddess of love, who made her way to the shore. Uranus now mutilated, left the earth forever but he promised that Cronus and the other titans will be punished for their actions. With Uranus gone, Cronus exiled the Cyclops and Hecatonchres to Tartarus so his reign over the earth could be established. We haven't discussed the titans much thus far, but this is where their rule began. There were two generations of titans. The first twelve born from Gaia are as follows. Coius, the titan of intelligence and foresight. Creus, the titan of heavenly constellations. Cronus, the titan of time and the ages. Iapetus, the titan of the mortal lifespan. Nemesine, the titan of memory and remembrance. Oceanus, the titan of the sea. Phoebe, the titaness of radiance. Rhea, the titaness of fertility and motherhood. Tethys, the titaness of fresh water. Theo, the titaness of shining light. And Themis, the titaness of divine law and order. The most commonly known titans from the second generation were Atlas, the titan of endurance. Eos, the titaness of dawn. Epimetheus and his brother Prometheus the titans of afterthought and forethought, Helios the titan of the sun, and Leto the titaness of motherhood. Having now established himself as the head of the titans, Cronus took his sister, Rhea, as his mate, and together they had many offspring. Cronus was terrified of a prophecy that Uranus and Gaia had foretold, 
that Cronus would be replaced by one of his sons. Rhea gave birth to the first six Olympians. Hestia, the goddess of the family hearth and sacrificial flame. Demeter, the goddess of agriculture. Hera, the goddess of marriage and family. Hades, the god of the underworld. Poseidon, the god of the sea. And Zeus, the god of the sky. Upon seeing his children, Cronus swallowed them whole in an attempt to stop the prophecy coming true. Rhea was distraught that her children were devoured and decided that she would hide her last born, Zeus. She gave Cronus a stone disguised as Zeus to swallow instead. Zeus was then sent to Crete where he would be raised by the nymphs until he was strong enough to rebel against his father. As the time passed, Cronus grew old and weak and Zeus only grew stronger. To aid him in his fight against his father, Zeus was given a potion, and when Cronus drank this potion, he vomited up all of Zeus's brothers and sisters, who were unharmed. Together with the other Olympians, they were able to overpower Cronus and banish him to Tartarus. Despite their victory, the war with the Titans had only just begun, as all except Prometheus and Oceanus rebelled against the Olympians. For ten years the war raged on, with neither side able to secure decisive victory. That was until Zeus travelled to Tartarus and released the Cyclops and Hectonchires. The three Cyclopses rewarded Zeus with the power of thunder and lightning, and the Hectonchires pelted the Titans with large boulders. With the additional help, the Titans were eventually defeated, and Zeus imprisoned them in Tartarus. The Titan Atlas was condemned to stand forever with the weight of the earth and heavens on his shoulders. Having watched the downfall of their children, Gaia and Uranus gave birth to one last monster, Typhon, the father of all monsters. The gods terrified began to flee, but Zeus would not let his kingdom crumble, hurling lightning at the beast over and over until it was defeated. There was one final attempt to overthrow the Olympians. The giants that were made from Uranus's blood were unhappy with the way they were treated and began to lay siege to Olympus, scaling the mountain to reach the gods. With the aid of Heracles, they were able to subdue and kill the giants. With all their enemies defeated or banished, no one could dispute the rule of the Olympians, and Zeus took his place on the throne. There are many variations of the gods' creation in Greek mythology, and some are most definitely more crude than others. This version does have some recurring features, such as the mothers aiding their children in dethroning their husbands, with Uranus and Cronus both being defeated by their children, almost as if history was doomed to repeat itself. The desire of power and dominance is something that is shared through all three generations of the gods and goddesses, and most likely reflects mankind's desire for power. Another important thing to note is when referring to most of the primordial deities, and even some of the titans, they are more of a personification or a symbol of concepts rather than physical beings. The last generation, the Olympians, have more defined appearances and traits that we can easily identify with, from Zeus's lightning to Poseidon's trident. I can only hope that this video has been informative for you guys, and if it has, then please consider giving it a like. Feel free to share any other variations regarding the creations of the gods and goddesses in the comments below. I'll be covering all the gods and goddesses in their own individual videos, but if there's something you'd like to see, then please let me know in the comments below. As always, I've been your host, Mythology and Fiction Explained.